once again, welcome back to the flat. Okay, right, good afternoon everybody, once again, welcome back to the plot. As you can see, I've got my, my full winter attire on, it's absolutely bulk up here. But uh, there's a couple of little jobs I've been able to, to get done. As you see, I like to pop up the garden at least once a day, uh, and do a little bit of work. And fortunately, a lot of the jobs I wanted to start this week have been put on hold. It's been blowing a holy for the last four days up here, so me and Roger have decided just to leave the tunnel but we're going to start on the, on the back end of it replacing some of the timbers but we've decided against it wait until these winds die down and we're going to leave it until the beginning of April but uh, once we get started on the tunnel we'll probably do a video then uh, get a new cover on it over get a new side, new netting on it'll be as, be as good as new but for the time being this is one of the little jobs I wanted to get done last year before was, I turned poorly and of course was the raspberry canes I'm getting most of them tied up, but we've got uh, one, two, three, we've got four beds all the way along the, the back end of the pathway here. And this bottom one, it was tied up, but the cut with the winds that we've had over the last few months, uh, it's been breaking away some of the um, some of the tyres. So what I like to do is to uh, get, me, get me strings out, go back along them, I've got screws in the top here. Put a double loop around the cane, and of course, I want to get it done now because that in the bud, and I could put a couple of turns around the screw and tie it nice and tight. So that's that done, it's another one done, tied in. And of course, what I never got done last year was the clip the tops. I want you to go along the second as and just. Nice and level with the top of the board. Cut the tops away. Just so they're nice and nice and neat. That one there needs to needs a tire. We'll, we'll clip that from here. And just clip off all the side branches that poke the way through. So you're not catching your face on as, as you pass. There's one there that could do with tying in. We'll tie that in and the rest of them are pretty pretty solid so that's another bed done a couple of loose tires here and there but i can get them i can get them done at a later date what i like to do with the, uh, the raspberries now is to go along and give them a, a good coating along the bottom of uh, horse manure right along the roots cover the whole lot uh, a good help of horse manure and then a sprinkling of sulfate of potash I put that on now, I like to get it on about February, but of course the way the weather's been the last few months, I've, uh, I've just held on till now. But a uh, good coating of horse manure, and you can see a handful all the way along the trench of sulfate of potash, and that's our first spring feed. And of course, they're just starting to bud now, so perfect timing. Get it done now. What I'm going to do is to go and start and sort some strawberries out, uh, and what I like to have. There's my meter, my soil meter. You can pick them up in the, in the shops, cheapest ships, few quid for them. But it gives you a really good guide to what your soil is and your moisture, your light. And uh, they're pretty good, but um, as I say, it'll give you a pretty good guide. You know, as I say with strawberries, you like them to be you know, slightly on this, on this acidic side of the soil. So I'm going to take us down home, and what we'll do, we've got a couple of beds down there, down home. Well, I'll be doing some more potting off. I want to uh, pot off some of the tomatoes that uh, was sort of about a fortnight ago. We'll get them done and I'll, uh, I'll show you how I like to pot ours off. I've got a few more bits and pieces in here to do, but we'll get that done before we, we head off down home. But uh, uh, not forgetting me meter, we're going to sort a couple of strawberry plants out and we're going to pot them up up here in the greenhouse and the rest we'll take down home. But uh, we'll get myself away and see where it's a little bit warmer. Okay? Okay, right, well. Here we are. Um, I actually knocked the film on yesterday because it was so cold. The wind was absolutely freezing. I got myself uh, in a blessed place, way back down home, and uh, I thought I'd get myself inside and try and 
finish off this video for the night, get it online. But um, <coughs> I managed to get the um, get the bottom raspberries all tied in, cut back so they're all nice and neat now. Uh, as I say, all I want is a bit of manure on top of them and a handful of uh, sulphate of potters. But I'll do that next week because it's still windy today and it's absolutely freezing cold. So I'm going to leave that for a couple of days till uh, I've managed to bring a, sort a few strawberries out here. Uh, first class little plants is cracking little plants I've got off the a little from next door. Um, really nice and of course I had them outside on the bench. Uh, when they rooted, they were rooted cuttings, I potted them up in a little nine centimetre pots and they sat on the back bench all winter and uh, where I did us in January I potted them up and brought them inside in the bottom polytunnel no heat and they just sat there and uh, that's the result of now first class lovely clean dark green just what I want excellent little plants out so I'm taking a few down home so when I go down home this afternoon I'll show you where I'm going to put them in the bed I've got uh, some long troughs I want to put them into there and they'll be there permanent yeah, as I say with strawberries, they like a slightly acid soil, not too uh, not too rich. Um, <coughs> plenty of organic manure and that in, but uh, I never bother with any chemicals or feeds or anything like that. Just there, uh, the run of mill. But these are going, I've got six of these spare. So what I'm doing with these, I'm going to place them in these big pots and they're going to sit in there on the bench all summer. And my idea is is when the send runners off if they're get if we get a nice crop off them yeah uh, because i don't know how they're going to perform i know uh mick and Lynn gets a first class crop out of them but they're they're in an open bed on the garden so i'm going to put the, the six bare ones that i've got in these big pots and they'll just sit in the back bench and if we get a nice crop off them and uh, which i'm hoping we'll do what i'll do is i'll take runners off these ones and uh, peg runners off them and we'll have uh, some nice runners for next year so we can put a, a nice bed out in the garden but uh, bear in mind you've got a rare uh, <coughs> plenty of protection for these now as I say it's down home we've got squirrels down there now so I'm going to have to be extra careful not that I want to do, um, <laughs> rob the, the animals of any feeds or fruit but uh, you know I like to pick a few myself if I just left them open the squirrels will be down and they'll clear the whole crop within a couple of days and it's the same with the grapevine at the end of the year um, when we get only I'll show you the, the grapevine I think it was where I finished last year before I turned poorly um, I was working on that but I've got it all trained up and I'm going to fruit it this year but I'll explain that when we get out home but for the time being we'll crack on with these I'm going to knock this out first class well rooted fill the pot with root so into there same level as what it is and this is my own compost this is 321 compost so there's plenty of meat in there's plenty of feed in it all the compost bins just pack that down really well take it up and there we have it We'll put it up now. We've got six of these as here. We'll, we'll put them all up and we'll put them on the back bench here. Give them a good watering, water around, soak in the roots, put them out in the back and they'll sit there all summer. But uh, hopefully, if we get a good crop of them, we'll take runners from these for next year and we'll, uh, we'll make ourselves a nice strawberry bed outside. The raised bed, we've got plenty of timber, <coughs> so we'll build a nice raised bed and we'll put strawberries in there for next year. That's the strawberries out the way. <coughs> Don't forget your sprays. Everybody's been commenting on the um, <coughs> on the sprays I use, soapy water, um, garlic spray for these if you want, make a bit of garlic spray, quite easy to do, just boil it down in some water, mash it up, strain it off, put it in your spray, um, I usually filter mine out in a litre spray, a few drops of washing up liquid, help it to get the plants and give them a good, good soap in that, as I say, the garlic spray will not kill the plants, it will not kill the, the insects, what it does, it deters them from eating the leaves and getting around them but the uh, the soapy water definitely will green fly white fly getting their gills and stops them breathing and that's a humane way of killing them off now we'll talk about the grapevine again when we get out home now this it's just starting to put up there first class oh well, this is a first year key enough last year i, I took the key in, uh, the year before in the october like i normally do um, Planted it in composting sand, and then last year, uh, middle of the year, 
when it was when it was full root the pot I took it out and then potted it up into this one so it's now a first year cane it's got three runners on there three branches and you can turn that into a first class little bunch little yeah, bush for training and what we'll do with this we'll train this up on a few canes make a little bit of a wigwam we'll train it up but we'll not let it fruit until next year I always let mine go for three years they get a good root system they get a good framework built up as I see I'll show you when I'm down home on the, the one I put in last year get a good framework then the, the following year the third year you can restrict the amount of fruit that comes on because you'll be surprised how much fruit will come on them I like to restrict me bunches I like to leave it about a foot 18 inches between each bunch so I reckon I'll get three bunches on each rod and I've got eight rods off the one main <clears throat> but I'll show you that when we get on home. This will be potted up into a nice um, deep flower pot, one of the big five gallon ones and it'll sit there quite happy all summer. We'll stick a few canes in it and uh, train it up and it'll be a first class vine for next year ready for fruiting. But, uh, I treat all my fruit exactly the same. Um, They'll get uh, exactly the same, they'll get a handful, of, uh, a teaspoonful of sulfate of potash just scattered around them and uh, hopefully that'll, that'll keep them nice and clean, it'll give them a good feeling, I'll give them a good spraying, good watering and they'll be as happy as Larry, sitting in there all summer. But uh, we can check on them as we go through up the year, but uh, I'm not going to do too much up here today because it's, it's absolutely freezing cold. If you remember three weeks ago, just another little point now before we get down home and I'll start putting some toms up. Um, if you remember um, down home, I, I sold the uh, DLS seed, broad custom, two trays, and that's them. Um, brought them up here, they've been sitting in the cold, absolutely first class, lovely dark green. Now, a lot of people tempted to put them off at that stage, I don't, I'll let mine grow on and grow on as, as long as I can. Now, remembering this, it's a nice deep little tray. And it's my compost, it's a 3 2 one mix that's in here, so there's plenty of meat in it there for the plants to feed on. They're not suffering, not by long chalk. People say when you leave your plants in the in your small trays too long, they start suffering because they're starving. There's no, no chance of these starving. They're absolutely fantastic. I let them go on for at least another fortnight before I even think about potting them off. But once again, I'll show you when the time comes, how we do ours. Just keeping that top on them in the evening, that's all. Plastic top on there. Cool greenhouse and they're, they're romping away. The only thing I've got left to put up here is the jade, the Savoy cabbage. They're the last ones I put in. I've got the, the uh, cabbages are in, the calabrese is in, the sprouts are in. They're all potted off into their cups and they're down in the cool greenhouse. Now I'm sitting in there quite happy. So that's the last one to do. Now, I'm happy with that. I'm going to spray these same. Um, Spray the strawberries and I think I'll give the I'll put this up and I'll give that a good spray. Now what I like to do with these is uh, at the end of the year I like to give the canes a good wash and all I do is peel off a little bits of bark that's up the sides, give them a good cleaning down because that's where you'll get your pest in that. You see the skin peeling off there. Give them a good cleaning up and then give it a spray with a little bit of juice fluid in your in your spray and uh, a couple drops of soapy water and uh, once again give it a good soap and that and works for me don't have any fancy sprays or anything uh, tree washes or anything like that that's all that needs uh, me, me fruit trees outside get exactly the same apart from this year i put grease bands on and that's all they've got their grease bands on and they've had a bloody good spray of um, chase fluid let's uh, mix it in a bit of water and a bit of soap first class keeps them nice and clean but that's it for today Hopefully, if uh, by the time I get on home, it'll get a bit warmer and I'll show you where I'm going to put these strawberries <coughs> down home. Okay, so I'll see you all soon. Right, well, here we are, back down home. Uh, if you remember, I think this is where I finished off last year with a grapevine. Well, uh, the one I had up the allotment was exactly the same as this one last year. Last year, it was a first year rod that had cut back. It was just a nice size. I planted it into this box and I let it grow all last summer. And what I cut off was the side shoots on the bottom there. Two side shoots running that way. Two uprights running that way. One main stem up the middle. And then two side shoots off there. And the main stem running up the top. Two side shoots here. It's just like a big Christmas tree. And of course, all I've had to do now is just go around and cut off 
any little pieces, runners, any little side shoots. What I did do last year, I just made sure there was no fruit allowed to crop on it. It was only a second year vine, in its second year, so really you don't want any fruit. And any premature fruit that was coming on it, I was cutting them off. Because basically all I wanted to do was to build a vine up, build a framework, and that's what we've got this year. So we'll allow the fruit this year, but we'll, once again we'll, we'll reduce the fruit because you get absolutely loads on these. So what we have is two, four, six, we'll have eight side shoots. So all I'll allow on each side shoot is four bunches. So that's that's quite a lot in the, in the, in the first year fruiting. But as I say, we'll just go along, put all the, the little side shoots, the little runners off, all the little bits and pieces where the fruiting buds are. There's a, there's a bud there, come out just nice. They're a little bit behind compared to the ones that's up in the glass house because this is outside <clears throat> and all this I'll need now is exactly the same as the one up the, up the, the plot just a little bit of weed, get the weeds out uh, it's had nothing done with it all winter we've just left it and it's, uh, it's grown really well it's a really nice, nice deep box really good rooted and all we'll do now we'll give it a spray a bit soapy water just to make sure there's nothing on it I sprayed it at the end of last year when it died back a little bit of jazz flow in the water and uh, a little bit of soap on it and give it a good spray of that and the rods lovely and clean any loose fibres or any loose leaves that you tend to build up on pull them off as you can see here there's still little pieces Cut them off with the cigars, put them right back to, to the bud, and it'll, that'll be a first class vine it, this year. There's, uh, there's nothing wrong with it, it's really nice and clean. The rods, lovely. the rods are lovely and clean. Uh, the top, what I'll do with the top, I'm beginning to put a little bit of pagoda on the top here, a few reels, so I've left the top to grow on. And what I'll do, I'll train it back along the pagoda along the top here. So we'll have side branches coming over the top there. And uh, it'll look abs absolutely fantastic by next year. We'll have uh, grapes just transcending down the, the back here. I'm going to have to uh, I'm going to have to think on my feet. Uh, because what we've got in the back of here on the, um, on the land is squirrels now. We've just noticed that there we've got a couple of a pair nesting up in the big tree at the back there and they've got a couple of young ones so we're going to have to be um, we're going to have to be a bit clever with what fruit this year um, the strawberries especially I'm going to have to put some sort of a cage over them and I'm going to have to think about putting some sort of mesh or cage over these um, no doubt they I'll leave a few out for the for the squirrels a few bunches but we want to get our share as well if we just le left them wide open the squirrels will just go berserking and clear the whole crop off in about a couple of days and we wouldn't get a look in but uh, as much as we love to see the squirrels around here we'll, uh, we'll have to think a bit, um, a bit clever but uh, I'm going to take the camera down there I've got me, I've got me pH tester in the soil uh, and I'm just testing that box down the bottom end there but we'll just we'll take the camera down there and we'll, we'll have a little look and see what it's like as I say the only thing that needs to go on there now is a bit of uh, sulfate of potash uh, loads of boxes down here um, I'll be filling these with some early titties <coughs> I'll be filling them with some early titties and uh, this is just one of the boxes down here if I can get this tripod uh, set up ok maybe just open that leg up a little bit There we have it, there's one of the boxes there and of course all I want to do here don't need a second list, all I want to do here is just make sure it's weed free get all these weeds out as I say it's been, it's been left all winter it was full of compost 
absolutely chocker. You can see, still see a lot of woody, woody material in amongst it, but it's a, it's a marvellous mix. I didn't want to over, make it over rich because what I'm planning on here is to put the um, is to put them strawberry plants. Now they'll, they'll be in here for about three years, two to three years. Um, with the strawberry, after about three years, they start to get a bit, they grow a bit too big, they get a bit woody. So I like to dig mine out. Um, the beauty of having them outside is you can just take runners, you can lead the runners into the soil at the side of them, peg them down, and just they'll grow away easy enough. They're uh, side runners, and then you can take them out and you can place the parent plants. The parent plants in about three years' time. You see, they get a bit big, and the fruits start to go back. So, best replace them after a couple of years. So I've had my pH meter in here for about half an hour now. I think we we'll take it out, get the, the muck off, and have a look at the. Um, it's a three-way meter. It's a uh, moisture, light, and pH. And my pH is just on the six. Now, to me, that's a little bit high, but I'm not too worried about it. Um, I'll put the plants in and just see how they grow. We can always knock it back a bit, knock the pH back down by putting well rotted horse manure that's been soaked in urine and that'll drop the pH down to slightly acidy. So we can do that for a week or two. Um, we'll get, get a hold of some manure, pile it on top that's been well soaked and that'll take the pH right down. If it was the other way, if it was going alkaline, we would have to lift it up by just adding a little bit of lime, but um, as I say, it's only on six, so it's not too bad. I'm not there, I'm not too fussed about that. But we'll, uh, as I say, we'll pop a bit of horse manure on there for a couple of few days, bring the strawberries down, let them harden up. Um, I'll put them outside on the bench in the, in the allotment, let them harden up for a few days because they have been in the polytunnel, they've been covered. So, what we'll do, we'll, we'll put them outside for a few days, then bring them down. By then, the manure should have worked its treat. Um, Getting the, the liquids into the, into the soil and dropping the pH to around about 5 or a little bit lower than that is to what I want in there. That'll be perfect for planting my strawberries. We'll plant three per box and we've got some black little black boxes here. We'll plant one plant in each one of them and uh, that'll be great. That's what I would say strawberries for this year. It's just another a trial to see how they go. We've always grown our strawberries inside in the polytunnels, but I thought uh, for a change we'll get some outdoor ones. And I say, as I say, I got some given up mixed last year. Lovely little root cuttings, and I've grew them on, and they're first class plants, so no doubt they'll go in here just nice. Um, we'll get some hoops sorted out middle of the year when the fruits start coming on, because no doubt the squirrels will be down and checking them out to see if, uh, see if they can pinch some more fruit. But um, if we can keep them covered over for the time being, we may get a few, uh, we may get a few nice outdoor strawberries. Okay, so that's me meat are done. Easy enough to pick up in the shops, cheap as chips, a few quid, and uh, it gives you a good reading on your soil, or your light, or your moisture, you know, but um, they're handy to have. So we'll get them boxes sorted out for, for next week, and then we'll probably get the um, we'll probably get the strawberries planted next weekend. But for the time being, we'll pop in the greenhouse, and I'm going to put a few tomatoes up, okay? Okay, right. <coughs> Excuse me, it's a lot warmer in here. It's uh, 60, just done the 60 mark in here. I've had the door open, as I explained up the allotment. Um, there's not many days pass by when, when, I, uh, when I don't come in here that I don't open the door. And, and just let some fresh air in, let the air get changed in the greenhouse and start going stagnant. No stale air, keeps the plants nice and fresh. And uh, as I say, they're looking great at the moment with just that little bit of heat. And one of my jobs at day, if you remember, we planted them a fortnight ago, the tomato seed, the first ones, and of course these are the gardener's delight. They're a lovely long truss with medium sized to cherry tomatoes on. Absolutely fantastic. Actually grew these for years and they're one of my all time favourites. And they're an easy tomato to grow. Well, these are the first tomatoes we've planted. Um, I've got some large Spanish, I've got some Alicante, and I've got the gardener's delight. And I've got some Shirley. Now, yesterday I made another sowing. I put my main crop tomatoes in, which of course is my money maker. I've just sown them, and as well as sown them, I sowed some 
courgettes and some aubergine now it, it's just nice the heat's just nice at, at the moment it's not too hot and it, it says it's not too cold so it's fine for just getting them in now with tomatoes it the uh, people always uh, tend to get them too leggy and my top tip is getting them up to the light getting as close to the light as you can up on the top shelves take them off the heat as soon as you can and i bring them down at the cool bench and just let them let them harden up in there they're perfect that's the size i like to pop mine up uh, so you get no problem potting off and where i like to put them into is a small just a small cup little plastic cup a couple of holes in the bottom i like to half fill my cup <clears throat> knock my plants out depending on how many i'm doing now small pots like this are fantastic for sowing a, a dozen seed just a dozen tomatoes at a time and there you have it you have a rare uh, you have a fantastic little and if you just ease them off you find that you've got a first class tomato plant with a lovely little root ball on that you can quite easily put up now you might think they're a little bit long just make sure you hold them by the leaves and i will just gently broke tease them apart and there we have it that's a first class little tomato plant sometimes i let them get a little bit bigger than that um i'll fill your cup in the middle i will just sit that on top of the compost and then go around that with a bit of fresh compost a little bit of perlite in gently easing it in we top nothing difficult about that whatsoever and what i've done i've sunk the tomato plant up to about an inch from the bottom of the leaves sometimes you can go farther down if you want if they're a little bit leggy take it right down to just below the leaves now to me that's just sitting perfect i'll do another one just half fill the pot tap it down and just ease easy enough just to peel apart and there we have it and that's what i was saying you want a you want a nice little root system on your tomato and then you'll get no problem with it whatsoever or you shouldn't do as long as you've got that little bit of little bit of heat just a gentle press in little top and there we have it first class little tomatoes potted on into the first pots or oh, they'll probably get potted on again from them in a nine centimeter square pot and they'll sit in that until the end of april first week in may before we even think about planting any tomatoes out up, up north here um so we'll just keep an eye on the temperatures they'll stop in this greenhouse as i say it's not overly hot in here through the day because we've had that little bit of sunshine when i come down from the uh from the allotment and it's lifted the temperature in here a good few degrees it's uh, just hovering on the 60 mark there but like i say i can open the door and i can let the place cool down at the same time letting in that fresh air which is what i want now these they're going to sit in the tree now i'll find myself a, a little tree Um, I've usually got them lying around here, but I've got a once again I've got a hunt around for a tree. I have got some over there. I'll, I'll pull one in, and what I'll do, I'll set them in the tree and I'll pour a load of water. There's my water can once again, fresh water from upstairs brought down this morning, and I'll tip that into the tree and I'll just let them soak it up, take all water up, and once they're seeing nice and moist on the top, take them out and I'll just stand on the bench here for a couple of weeks. Once that pot's full of root. I'll get potted on again and it'll be a nine centimeter pot and then that'll be its final pot before planting out if by any chance it does turn really cold and we've got to hold off and then they'll, they'll quite happily sit in them nine centimeter pots for a good three or four weeks yeah, if they do need any extra feeding yeah, you can tip it into the bottom of the, the tree where you're watering from or up above <coughs> Water on with a bit of light feed and they, they'll grow away quite strong no problem but that's that's the first of our tomatoes anyway well i'll carry on this afternoon till i get it i'll get all these i'll get this first dozen of these money maker done these um gardeners delight done 
and then I'll get started on the Spanish through the week. I'll get them all potted up, all in the trays, and they can sit here quite happy for another couple of weeks. Well, I'm well pleased with them. That's the um, that's the Shirley ones. Uh, they're really nice tomorrow. So there's only six seed in each pot of them. You only get about twelve seeds for a few quid. But I like to try a couple of them. But like I say, the my main crops are always my money maker, giant Spanish and Alicante. And uh, you get a first class crop out of them. Well, the only seeds I haven't sown is my Elsa Craig, which I'll be using for an outdoor crop. They'll go in the, in the old greenhouse because <coughs> there's no roof on there. So the, the Alicante, you'll get the um, Elsa Craig will go in there and you'll get a first class um, outdoor tomorrow out of them. And I'll be sowing a few out the back here like I did last year. Quite easy to sow, quite easy to, to bring up, um, but they need hardening off before planting outside. And of course, they'll be planted a lot later than what these ones are. It's probably about another three weeks before I even decide to plant there to sow the seed. Usually about the middle of April, and so they're ready right to the back end of May and into June before I start planting them out outside. But that's the tomatoes anyway. I'll keep you updated as we uh, as we go on, as the weeks go on. Uh, as I say, this this greenhouse is a uh, chopper now. <coughs> but um, I've got a full. I've got dahlia cuttings. There's what dahlia chewers. I'll be taking cuttings from them, and probably in about a week's time. There's some nice ones on there now, uh, but I'll, I'll leave them for another week or two. I'll give them a good spraying. Uh, chamomile tea, that's all these get, bit of chamomile tea, but uh, I might put a bit of soapy water on them if I notice any green fly, there's, that's another one, that's prone to green fly and white fly, uh, the daily has, so keep an eye on them, but uh, yeah, all the tubers are budding up nicely, so we'll, uh, we'll decide on them in about a fortnight's time, how many cuttings they take, and then when we've taken the cuttings, the tubers will be potted up in the pots and taken them up, up the garden, and put in a cold polytunnel and they'll just be left in there until it's time to plant out once again beginning of june right through june <coughs> even to the end of june and july because you can get some really cold weather up here in the north so that's it i hope i've given you a few tips again on your tomatoes um don't wait too much for a to put them up don't wait until just until the first two years are out let them get a bit of meat on them nice little root ball on them and they'll transplant much easier and you've got a much better chance of them making a good, really good, first class tomato plant in a couple of weeks time. But I'll show you them as we go on. Not a problem. I'm going to crack on here, get you finished before the darkness comes again. And then hope we'll get this video online. If you cannot wait for our videos coming out, you know you can always catch us on the Facebook page. Uh, Jeff Foreman on the plot. Just send with a friend's request and we'll get you signed up and you can speak with most nights on the um when i'm on the laptop okay so for the time being or till next week and we'll we'll make a new video hopefully we'll be able to get in the garden get the um get the strawberries planted and then we'll take a look at the peaches the apple trees and we'll make sure all them are well covered horse manure and we'll start the feeding off with the sulfate of potash okay bye for now then